16 people, consisting of seven batsmen, five bowlers, two all-rounders, and two wicket keepers. The manager chooses a team of 11 players, consisting of five batsmen, four bowlers, one all-rounder, and one wicket keeper. Find the number of different teams he can choose. Did everybody get caught? I, right? Yeah. But is everybody cool with part? Part 5BI. Thank you. Can you just do where, where we're at right now? So which part is this? Part I part. BI. 5BI. Technical difficulties. Okay, so it says on here that we have um, we have seven batsmen, right? We have five bowlers. Mm -hmm. We have two all-rounders, and we have two wicket keepers. One wicket keeper. No, for oh. the original. For the original. Oh yeah. Right. Then it says, um, the manager chooses a team of 11 players consisting of five batsmen. Mm -hmm. So they have to choose five batsmen. And they have to choose four bowlers, choose one all-rounder, and choose one wicket keeper. Okay? So we initially have to choose, we have seven batsmen to choose from, and we're going to choose, coming, and we're going to choose five of them. So that's the first one you do. Hello? Okay. You good? Yeah. Okay. So, seven choose. How many batsmen are you choosing? You're choosing five. Five. Right? Ten. And then what's the next one? I have five bowlers. How many do I need to choose? Four. Four. So, five. Choose four. And then yeah. I have the um, all-rounders. I've got two of them. I need to choose one. Mm -hmm. And then wicket keepers. Still two choose one. Two choose yeah. one. Okay. All right, and so what do you have to do with all these? Uh, my question is, is it, is it this or this or this or this, or is it this and this and this and this make this thing? Yes. It's and. So what do we do with and? Multiply. We multiply. So does that make sense why we would multiply the two? Yeah. I need this and I need that and I need that and I need that to make my team. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. So these are all going to be multiplied together. So you have your little calculators, you do 7, choose 420 is the answer, right? So when you do that and you multiply them all together, so times, 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 the answer turns out to be that. So go ahead yeah. and um, take a look and see if you, did, if you know how to put in your calculator right, all that kind of fun stuff. Yeah. But that I, I was a little tricky. Okay, we're going to talk about it. So... Technically, does it make sense that this number of 420 is actually every complete possibility that could happen for that team's choices, right? Mm -hmm. So that's like the big picture, okay? Now let's look at what the next thing says. Find the number of different teams the manager, the manager can choose if one particular batsman refuses to be in the same team as one particular bowler, okay? So how does that work? So I know that this is, if everybody gets along, this is how it could potentially work. Now we have to figure out how it would look if we have to eliminate one of the batsmen, and, or perhaps we'll eliminate one of the bowlers. So rather than seven <coughs> batsmen to choose from, what do we have? One batsman has decided they are not, right? Uh -huh. Six, right? So I have six, six batsmen, and how many am I gonna choose at this point then? Why four? Because what? Well, because the scenario is, let's say the first scenario is batsmen must must already be in this group, right? So you would say, this guy doesn't want to work with anybody if this guy's on the team. So we're going to say he has to be on the team, therefore this guy would not be on the team, or vice versa. So you would have four to choose from at this point. 
because you kind of have eliminated one of your choices. Mm -hmm. This guy is saying either I'm in or I'm out. Does that make sense? Yes. So both numbers reduce. So like instead of having seven bathrooms, now you have six, and instead of choosing five, you're choosing four. Right. Because one is perhaps batsman is in, done. Now I have the rest to choose from. Or the batsman is not in, done. I have the rest to choose from, depending on what we're looking at. Why do you lower the amount you're choosing? Yeah. That's one of them in. Let me show you. Yeah, can you do it? There's three, there's multiple ways to get through that. Okay. It's hot in here. It's hot. Is it? No, it's not hot. It's not hot. Yeah. <laughs> you were singing a song. No. That's so hot. And then I'll get cold, but then I'll get hot. <clears throat> Mark scheme. Say it again. The mark scheme. Yeah, I pulled up the mark scheme for you all. Okay, so this is the one we're looking at. I think we all understand this part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now, so this is this way, or it could be done this way, or it could be done this way. So there's three different ways to attack this problem. Mm -hmm. So the first way is to recognize that um, the first one is these are taken into account the batsmen is going to be uh, a pain in the butt. And who's the other one? Somebody else is a pain in the butt. The bowler is a pain in the butt. The bowler is a pain in the butt. <laughs> Just kidding. So you have four, six choose four, and then four choose three, because you're reducing from the, the grouping. And then why the two times two? Because you still have to choose one wicket, whatever that is, and one of the others. And if you multiply that all together, you get 240 ways that that could potentially happen, subtract it from the 420, and that's your 180. Wait. Yes. Oh. How did you know to subtract it from 420? Because, okay, so 420 is every single way that could potentially happen. With what they gave us. Everybody gets along. Mm -hmm. Everybody can play with everybody. It doesn't really matter. Uh -huh. Then we have restrictions happening here. So we have to take into account the restrictions that could potentially happen. When we have the full everybody minus the restrictions, we have 180 ways that we can make this work. <clears throat> okay. Or, this is another way, we have, if the bat guy is in, the bowler guy is out, right? Or, if the bowl guy is in, the bat guy is out. Or, they're both out. Potent this is the way I would have done this problem. I would have said, okay, so let's look at every scenario that could happen. I know that if the bat guy is in, then this guy, bowler guy, can't be in. But if the bat guy is not in, then bowler guy is in. Does that make sense? So the scenario is bat is the bat batsman is in, but the bowler guy has to be out. So uh -huh. it's six choose four, four choose three, two and two, and so that's that here is this scenario. Mm -hmm. Moving on to the next scenario, bowl guy is in, bat guy is out. So you would have where where are we? Six. Here we are. Five. Six choose three times four choose three, times two times two, because these never really change. Does that make sense? Or, what we do with or, we add them. Both the guys are out, okay? Six choose three, four choose four, times two times two. We're gonna add those all together, and we have 180 ways. We don't have to subtract it from the total amount. And then there's another way to go through that process. So you have to kind of figure out which way makes sense to you best, yes. Oh, can I um, find one from the other test? Sure. What about like the, um, let's see, October, November 2016 slash 62, number four? October, November 62. This was the test that you like briefly went over? Okay, so I have that already. Well, I have it printed out if you want to. Just... Yeah, I think I have it printed out over here. Don't, don't I? Don't I? What number did you say? Number four. Okay, so for everybody that wants to look at it. The time taken to cook an egg by people living in a certain town is a normal distribution with a mean of 4.2 minutes and standard deviation of 0.6. Find the probability that person chosen at random 
is between 3.5 and 4.5 minutes to cook an egg. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, how do we start? So the first thing we're going to do is our, our Z tables. Is everybody cool with setting it up? Looking at your normal distribution curve and you know it has to be between um, 3.5 and 4.5. <clears throat> is everybody okay with that? We kind of did one in class like this where we recognize that if it went, if we had this and we had 4.5 and we had 3.5, and we know we had to be between it, we would have to find all the way back from 4.5 and subtract 3.5 from it. Did that make sense what I just said? For, so we go from here to here, and then we subtract from here to here, mm -hmm. and that gives you that bulk in the middle. Yes? But then can't, you can't do 3.5 and back, so you have to do um, uh, greater than 4.5, and then you have to, like they're like mirror images of each other? Right? You can do 4.5 less. You can do that. But 3.5, you have to find its... You'd have to go, this should be actually over here negative, but you'd have to find its mirror image over here and find uh -huh. out what it is from behind that. So what would it be behind 3.5? Let's look at it over here. Well, don't, first you've got to con convert you to z-scores. Convert z so the first one is when we're converting, uh -huh. we've got less than 4.5. You see, does everybody understand where the little formula comes from? Right the here. x minus mu over sigma. Right, is everybody good with that? And that's all given to us, mm -hmm. except for the formula, of course. So you have to do your conversion, so Z is less than 0.5. Is everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. And they just found where is 0.5 located on the chart. Does anybody want to practice that? Look at your chart, look at 0.5, see if you get 0.6915. Actually, I think that might be one of the most frequent ones used. Is that at the bottom, the little thing at the bottom, or not? I could be wrong. And so that's from everything from 4.5 back. Yes. Is it on the bottom row? No. No, it's not one, not frequently used. Then. I thought maybe it was. 0.75, 0.9, 0.95. Okay. All right. Is everybody good with that so far? So, so far so good? Mm -hmm. Now let's look at the next one. We're going to do less than 3.5. We convert it. We get um, negative 1.167. Is everybody okay with y, it's 1 minus 0.8784. Take a look at 1.167 and see where it goes. What do you get for your decimal? Miss Kate, yes. I thought you can't do less than 3.5 because it's to the left of mu. Yes. So, you're going to get a negative. What would you have to do? Plus well, because well, isn't like the um, saying less than 3.5 is the same as saying greater than 4.5. Mm -hmm. But yeah. so in order to find greater than 4.5, we can't do that. We can find less than 4.5 and we can say 1 minus that and then we'll be left with that, which is the same thing as that. Right. Uh, can you say whatever's above 4.5 is the mirror image? Is that true? That's what he keeps saying, like 3.5 and 4.5 are the same thing. What's the mean for? Is the mean for or something like that? Well, what was the mean? I don't know what the mean was. That's what I was asking. 4.5, right? Okay. 4.2. 4.2. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. So that's why I was like, yeah. Yeah. I think you said that because it looks like it. It looks like it. That's what it's not. What is the Z score is? You got to find the Z. Did you find that yet? The Z. Okay. Let's see. This isn't working for me. There. So you can. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. There it is. So you're going to take this thing and convert it, and you get. Oh my goodness. You get this. You guys try this. This is easy. Try. Don't try this at home, kids. So you have negative 1.167. Can I look that up on my, my Z table? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, well it's negative. negative. You flip the sign, so you got You have to flip the sign. Okay. Oh. So. Do me a favor, look at your little z score. So it's probably that z is greater than positive 1.167. So you're going to look it up. So, can I, 
can, did we decide we can see orange on here or no? Yeah, orange is totally, if the lights are off. Oh, if the lights are off. Okay. I'm going to use a pencil or something sharp to show. Okay, so we're going to use the positive. Is everybody seeing where I'm at? 1.1? 1 .1? Uh -huh. Can you see that without me turning around? Okay, so 1.1. One point one. Mm -hmm. Come over to was it six? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here's where we start. So point eight seven seven zero. But on it was one point one six seven, right? Yeah. So there's seven. Come on down. Add fourteen to this to the end of that. So what's seventy plus fourteen basically? Point eighty-seven eighty-four. Right. And there's your answer. Is everybody seeing that? Mm -hmm on their little chart. So, once we got 0.8784, why do we subtract it from 1? Because it's, it's on this side of it, right? It's the less of it. Yes? Okay, so when we're, find, so when we're finding something like what you just did, mm -hmm. is that only the time we use the top and the side? Because we can just use so if you use the middle part, they give you the, they give you the percentage. The percentage of something happening, so that's when you're inside. When they have the, the mean and all that, and you have to go to find the percentage, that's when you use the outside parts. Okay. All right, so is everybody good with this? Now, why is this happening? That's where I drew it over here earlier. So it's this whole thing minus what we just found, which is this thing, sorry, which is what's left over in between. Okay, is everybody seeing that? So let's see, so less than, when you're less than negative 1.167 is the same as less than 3.5. And if you subtract it from 1, then you're getting greater than 3.5. Right. And then we did there, for, um, which is 0 0.1, 12, uh, 12, 16. Mm -hmm. And then you do the other one minus that, and you're just going to be left with this stuff in the middle. In the middle. And that's right. what we want. That's right. Yeah. Is everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. Like crickets. <laughs> So that was odd. We're at three points. What's the next part ask? Now, this one says 12%, so it's giving me a percent. So I'm probably going to be working in the middle of the chart, right? So 12% of the people take more than T minutes to click an A, find the value of T. Okay? So 12% take more than T minutes to, so what do I have to do? More than T minutes, 12%. So what do I do? What do I do in this case? You find like where 12% would be in here, and then find the Z score that corresponds to that. Okay, so where does 12%, how do we find 12%? How do we write it, first of all? Point 0.12. Point 0.12, right? Yeah. yeah. So go ahead and look on the little, little chart. Now, can we find point 0.12? No. We find the things to the right of it? No. So what do we have to do? We have to look at the corresponding part. Yeah. So what would 0 0.12 be? 1 minus 0 0.12 is what? 0 0.88. So go ahead and look up 0 0.88. And you have to find the, if you can't get right on it, you want to try to find as close as you can to Correct. it. Correct. You go under it first, right? So 0 0.88. One point one seven uh, five. Yes. Okay. And you get right on point eight eight. Is everybody cool with that? Does everybody see how we did it? We know we can't go above point one two, so we have to look behind it, which uh -huh. is the other whatever percent. So if we don't do the add-on on the test, we'll get it wrong, right? They would like you to do the add-on. Okay. Did you do add-on for this one? Yeah, you add on. You had to add on because you were under it a little yeah, bit, right? Yeah. Ten. Yeah. So then you needed to do it, right? So is everybody? But look what they wrote. They would accept. 1.17 to 1.18. Okay, mm -hmm. so that tells me they're they're pretty cool with whatever. It is, but yeah. Okay, so now does everybody understand why it's 1.175 equals t minus 1.2 over 0.6? Because x is the same thing as t in this case. Correct. Yeah. And what do we what do we have here? 1.17 is a z score is equal to whatever x minus the mean is over the standard deviation, right? Yeah. So that's a little formula. So then you start to solve, and you get T is 4.91. Mm -hmm. Yes? How do you know it's 0.88? How do we know it's 0.88? Okay, so you see 12%. 12% 12 
is representative Here's my line. Let's just say this is 12 percent, 0.12. Is everybody good with that? Can I measure something to the right like that? No. no. I have to do this up to the left of it. Okay. So what's the left of it? How do I get 0.88? One minus 0.12. Right. Yeah. Does that make sense now? Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Is everybody okay with that one? Triple I was a little tricky. Yeah, and you know what? It kind of bothers me because. You will not have learned, you, you don't learn logs until the next level. So why are they concluding logs? That's my question. Is there another way to do this problem? Um, so let me look at it. Hello? I'm good, how are you? I'm teaching. Yeah. A sample of n people is taken. Find the smallest value of n if the probability that none of these people take more than 10 minutes to cook an egg is less than 0 0.0063. Mm -hmm. um, so the result, mm -hmm. why would they use 0.88? Because you can't go that way. N. And it's less than, and we don't know n, is less than 0 0.0003. Is that point? To the, end? to the nth power. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't like it because you have not been told how to use inequality or power correctly placed using n. Um, but you still would have to. You still would have to use logs or guess and check. So here's what here's how this works. I, I can't imagine why. Well, have you seen logs before? Like I think in algebra two, two, right? Logs are pretty cool. So the way it works is I use the ln button instead of logs. They'll give you the same answer. If I have something, this might be good for you for SAT purposes anyway. So if I have something that looks like this, that looks like this, and I'm trying to solve for n, let's look at it with something we are aware of. For example, 2 to the n is equal to 4. Okay, You can tell me right now, you know that n is 2. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. So it's not hard. You see that. So the idea is 0.88 to what power gives you 0 0.003? Now, yeah. that's a really hard guess and check kind of thing. So here's how this works. Um, if you take something called the n natural log, and you look at your little calculator, there is an ln button on there. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. Should be at the very front. I use natural logs because typically that's the one that's on the face of the calculator. If you take the natural log of both sides, if you do something to one side and you do it to the other side, does it make sense to you that you haven't changed it at all, right? And one of the rules for logs is that exponents, once you have the natural log in front, can be pulled to the front. So it would be n ln of 2 equals ln of 4. So you find ln of 2 and 4. Uh-huh, and you solve like you would naturally. So you're going to find this value and divide it by this value, and you're going to get your answer. You should get 2. And we know that it's 2 because 2 to the second is 4. Yes. So doing ln to both sides is kind of like doing arc cosine to both sides. Absolutely. You're not changing it at all. So that's, I mean, regardless if you're going to get three points out of this problem, the fact is, what if, I get, what if you had 2 to the n power is 9? on an ACT exam, for instance. So how would you go through that process? LN both you sides? Could, you would LN both sides. You could guess a check with that one, because you know the answer should be about, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. So LN both sides. So if I LN both sides, so LN of 2 to the n equals the LN of 9. Remember that the exponent can come to the front. And divide that out, what do you get? 2 to the what power? is 9. Well, 2 to the third power is 8, and 2 to the fourth power would be 16. So, so 9 halves? So it's a little bit less, yeah, it's like 2, it's like 3 point something. 3.17. So n is 3.17, which is not a bad thing for you to know how to do when you go to take these tests. Yes? So what do you do with the LNs when you get nln2 equals ln9? 
Well, because you're plugging in your calculator, it's going to take the answer for you. No. Yeah. They're running. Because you do plug them in, you get four at forty-five point. Because you're talking about people, the and population of people. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and do that. So you would ln both sides. But you pull the end. Right. You pull the end of the front by properties of exponentials for logs. And once you pull that to the front, you would get and the ln of 0.88 is less than ln of 0.003. So you take ln of 0.003 divided by ln of 0.884. Yeah. So n is less than, is it less than? Greater than. Greater than. Sorry, I started off wrong altogether. Greater than, greater than, greater than. 45.4. You're actually, the top one was correct, 0.8 was actually correct. It's supposed to be less than. Okay. Well, this shouldn't have changed it over unless you're dividing by a negative. That's what they changed over there. They had it the other one. Way. Oh, was the original greater than 0.12 percent? The question? Maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so why would we flip it over? There. Because you, can't do. because you can't do the things to the right, you have to go to the other side. So that 0.88 is the basically the negative of it. So when you divide by a negative, you flip your sign. Okay. And again, that probably would not be one that you would get three points for because you have not been introduced to that until you get to ace path two. Why do they test you on it? I don't know. I don't like that. So far though, of all the tests we've done, I think that's probably the only problem that we've seen that yeah, really... It's not that bad. It's really not that bad when you're introduced to it. LNs are really... It's just when you see it, you're like... Yeah, like I've never seen an LN before. But for a future reference, anytime you want to find what N is when it's a power, that's a really cool technique to use. All right, are we good so far? Um, Sorry, I have a question if you want to just like mark my Well, let's just play. If you have questions, you can just like read. Yeah, you want to see a question. Do you mind if I pick another one from another text? May, June 2016, um, number 5II. Okay, let me find it while she's looking. Did he say he did it? Yes, he fixed his header, so you can give me his flash drive and I'll do it because I don't know. Okay, let me go back and buy this tool and I'll find the flash drive. Like I have a laptop. Oh, you can do it. That's the way to go. Major in 2016. Major in 2016 slash 61. 61. Tomorrow we'll be together and Wednesday. So we're good, right? Keep working on these problems, please. This is due Thursday. Do what? Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. Just don't turn it in after school under my door because they have a tendency to get thrown away. I did have somebody turn it in to find it. There it is. Okay. Go ahead and look at it. Read it, and then we'll kind of talk about it. The one I had circled was II, so I guess II understood how to do it, but II was a, because it, it switches, it, it's actually a binomial distribution for II. In the middle? Yeah. Okay, let's talk about that. The first one is a normal distribution, and II is a binomial distribution. And it flips to binomial. But they're, it's binomial, but they're using, it says X is a binomial distri distribution, and is also a normal distribution, so it's, Confusing. That is confusing. That's the second one we've seen that does that, though. So, okay, you have plastic straws are manufactured to fit into drink cartons which have a hole in the top. A, um, a straw fits into the hole if the diameter of the straw is less than three millimeters. 
The diameters of the straws have normal distribution with a mean of 2.6 and the standard deviation of 0.25. A straw is chosen at random. Find the probability that it fits into the hole in a drink fits into the hole in a drink cart. Okay, so let me go ahead and pull this over. You have to convert it to a z-score first. First, right? So, the probability of less than 3.0. So, is everybody cool with remembering how to do that? Taking 3.0 minus 2.6 divided by that. And so, go ahead and check out probability of z is less than 1.6 on your little chart. To get 0.95. Well, no, 0.945. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's your probability. With part I. Yep. So that's that's pretty 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 good stuff. Okay. Five hundred straws are chosen at random. Use a suitable approximation to find the probability that at least four hundred and eighty straws fit into the holes if the drink in the drink cartons. So how do they convert this into a binomial all of a sudden? Because you've got like um success and failure. Yeah, it fits or it doesn't fit. What uh -huh. else? It's, um, they're independent? They're independent of each other. So I put the first straw in, it fits, good to go. Put the next straw in, did it matter if the first straw fit? No. No, so fits or not fits. It's independent of what happened the first time, or the second time, or the third time. Does that make sense? Yeah. What else? They're limited. There's limited, there's 500, but it's there's, still yeah. a, a lot, but limited. It's not millions. There's another criteria. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're looking at, we're just looking at the question for now. Oh, the question, okay. Yeah, just for now. We're trying to figure out, this initially was a normal distribution, right? And then all of a sudden, the answer key scroll kind of became a binomial. And we're trying to justify, why would could this be now a bino considered a binomial? So the criteria to make a binomial is that it's a success or failure, so fit or don't fit. It's a limited number of trials, 500 for limited still, right? What else? independent of each other. Mm -hmm. If the first one fit, does it matter if the second one fit? Does it matter, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And then what's the last one? What's the last one? The last one has to do with the so probability of, well, success or failure is the first thing we said. Yeah. So is it a constant probability every time? It is, right? What was the probability that it, it actually fit in the hole? What was what we just found? Yeah, but they, they've got like binomial and normal distribution like jumbled up together. I'm not sure where they're getting 472.6 from. So they have the binomial is 500 and point, point 0.9452, which is what we just found here. Uh huh. Z is greater than <coughs> Did they do it either way? They only had one method. So, but where did 472.6 and 25.898 come from? Is that like where they did NP and NPQ? Mm -hmm. So it's a binomial and a normal distribution. Pulled together as one. And since it was a normal distribution, that's why they were converting to z-scores. And then they did one minus whatever they... They took the binomial and converted it to normal? Oh, because they know, because if you have N, P, and Q, then... So it's N times probability to get that. And then and N, P, Q. N, P, Q is this. So N, P, Q, so it would be N, which is um, 500, right? Uh -huh. Times, times um, P, which is the success, which is 0.945, times Q, which is the opposite. So okay. 1 minus 0.945, right. and then so 25.8. And that's what we come up with, and then they yeah. Well, it's five points. Just that part I I was five. Yeah. Points. Wow. I'm even gonna try the I know the second part is the die.
Oh, and then. Yeah. We do six A I and I I. Yeah, the bell's about to ring. Oh. And you have to go. Yeah. So yes, we'll we'll come back. You want to look at it? Yeah. Look at this. This is what you just said. Yes. That was okay. Oh. See. Oh. Ah, see, you guys are good.